from Houston, Texas. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering Grace Hopper celebration of women in computing. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Houston, Texas for the Celebration of Women in Computing. This is the Grace Hopper Celebration. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal news. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined by my host Jeff Frick, the general manager of theCUBE, and Ashley Conard, who's the ABI student board member of uh, Anita Borg Institute, also a PhD at Brown University, went to a small computer science school. Welcome to the, welcome to the CUBE. Thank you. So first thing I got to ask you is we had another, other, your other cohort on, another student member. She's actually not a student technically, but she graduated. You're still in school, getting your PhD. Um, what's it like right now? I want to get your personal reflection on the current state of this world that you're looking in front of you. You're actually a PhD. Gosh, you're, um, you're looking at a world in front of you, industry, academic, but the ecosystem of, yeah. of women, smart, brilliant people, yeah. are really is, is amazing. What's your take on that? So that's a very good question. One of the things that I, really kind of want to scream at this conference is that, uh, so I'm computational biology. It's a field that integrates biochemistry, computer science, math, physics, um, a ton of different fields. And no matter what field you're interested in, whether it be the arts or history or literature, or in my case, biology, you can couple computer science with what you do, make it more efficient, make it applicable, uh, and, and even work on visualizations of any kind to portray what, you, what you're learning and what you want. So um, we do have a ton of brilliant people here and a lot of uh, industry and academic uh, presences here. So I think those people should, should just continue to understand that as we continue to move forward in this technological age, you need to couple computer science with what you do. So when did you when did you been, uh, bring in the computer science with your bio, with your so love of biology? So how did that that's happen? That's a very good that's a very good uh, question. So um, I came in wanting to do biochemistry, and I was at school for a month and a half, really shy freshman, um, and one of my supervisors, uh, my advisor at DePaul University, a little liberal arts school, said you should apply to Grace Hopper. So I did, and I got a scholarship from the NSF uh, to come, and I started learning about what computational biology was. I, I was really interested in computing, but I didn't know how to navigate, like how to merge the two. Uh, it, it's something that I thought, yeah, there's something here. We can clearly see an intersection. Uh, and I started learning what computational biology was. Um, so that's kind of how I, I got started, um, you know, kind of learning about, about what's going on here. And um, then I went back to my school and did a lot of outreach. Uh, helped others, students, uh, know know about Grace Hopper, uh, how to apply. I gave a few talks. I also started, um, I helped start the robotics club at our school. Um, I did a lot of outreach through something called STARS, um, which is a computing corporation that goes out to, to uh, middle schools and high schools to uh, teach them to code. So all of that has kind of led me to where I am now. Um, and, and now as a student board member, I want to give back. I want to let the, the little schools know, the liberal arts schools, that yeah, okay, maybe we don't have computer science in the curriculum yet. Maybe that's something that we need to work on. Um, and I know, that, I know that we can do it. I know that uh, I'm a living example of that being true, and I want to reach out to those people who are interested but not able to uh, convince their school, convince their professors to take math classes because they're in computer science. I had to petition my school to be able to take linear algebra um, because that wasn't in the computer science curriculum. So, we're getting there, um, and I think that the, the liberal arts schools um, can what's start to make that. What's the bottleneck right now? Well, what's the problem? What's the what's the threshold that needs to be broken through? What's the what's the impediment? The impediment for for computer science in small schools is it institutional structure? Is it awareness? I think it's all of those things. Um, we have people in academics that really know their field really well, but they're not on the cusp unless you're at like a you know, really big research institution, um, and I don't blame them. We just need more resources to extend out to them, um, and now through Grace Hopper, through other mul a multitude of organizations, we have those resources. Hour of Code is a great way to integrate now what colleges are doing with high schools even. We don't have to stop at college. We can go further down, go back into middle school and say, okay, well, how can we restructure the whole system? Um, and that's what- How do you make computer science cool for girls in high school, because 
I, you know, I'm a little bit biased. I'm a DOD dad of a daughter, two daughters, and both have affinity towards math and science. And it's but, there's not a, cool. but yeah. there's a little bit of like, I don't want to be in that guy cling over there. Or it's kind of a yeah. nerdy, or maybe it's a different bias, yeah. but they have an affinity towards it. Is there a way to break that ice, if you will? Yeah, so one of the things that I think Grace Hopper uh, can show us is that beautiful women, brilliant women, um, eccentric women, anyone can do it. You know, we need, we need a face. We need a face and maybe that's a blonde girl like me. Maybe that's an African American. Maybe that's an Asian. Maybe that's another guy. We just need people talking about it. Um, that's the way that we can break the stereotype. And it's not just, it used to be silo, but not anymore. There's a, other opportunities, disciplines to vector in to And I think science. we need to preach that. Um, I have multiple um, mentees that are worried, but they want to get involved, they don't know how, it's hard to find a way to integrate the two. Um, but again, it exists. There are, there are a multitude of ways that we can get involved, and just talking about the fact that the, those opportunities exist is the best way to go about it. So, uh, Ashley, one of the topics today in the keynotes was about computer science as a core piece of curriculum. And, and you know, everyone goes to high school, they take, the, right, everybody takes their four years yeah. of math, and four years of history, and biology, chemistry, and physics. You know, should computer science now be added into yeah. that slate? It's just, that's just one of the things yeah. that you take. Think of it as a language. Think of it as biology. There's AP computer science, we heard that today. It's, it's a no-brainer, it's a no-brainer, but right now we have a lot of people that are kind of rooted in what they know, and we just need to remove what they know and teach them something new. And there are now, like I was saying, a ton of different organizations that can help and us it, do that. And to your point, it's a tool that can be used Yeah. Just like it can be used in any business yeah. that we see here, it yeah. can really be used in any kind and of academic area of study, right? Absolutely, and this is my fifth Grace Hopper now as a board member coming from when I was a tiny freshman. Um, <laughs> and it, it makes me want to cry uh, how beautiful it's become. It's something very different than it was, but we have a presence. We are able to tell everyone now, as we continue to grow, that there is a huge support network, that we're doing the right things, and we have awesome companies here and academic institutions that are also uh, empowering us women and, yeah. and just any kind of diversity within computer science. We had uh, um, some uh, women on that have been senior in their career, they're in the, the prime of their life. Eileen Fagan was one earlier. And you know, she's, they've had a, a journey and they've experienced some scar tissue as they say. Yeah. Um, but this is a movement now, this is gravity. The Grace Hopper celebration really is a flashpoint for this new generation the torch is being passed, it's okay, there's a road map, there's uh, tracks, there's community behind it. And so that's a wonderful thing, and we're certainly excited to cover it and glad you could come on and share your insight. But I got to get that back down to the root levels. How do you get people started down earlier in, their, in the in elementary school? How do you yeah. create that, that biases are okay, yeah. but it's okay, computers are everywhere. So tell us your story. When you first had that coding moment where you said, oh wow, I'm coding and I don't necessarily need to be a major to hang a certificate on the wall, this is a skill set that I'm going to integrate into my passion. What was that moment for you, or collection of moments? Um, actually, I was here at Grace Hopper. Uh, I had an interview with a particular company, and they asked me to, to code, and I said, oh, I've not done that before. Um, I haven't learned this language. And she smiled at me, <laughs> and I was so nervous, but she goes, that's okay, I can help you. And we built an awesome little program. Uh, this, this little guy was dancing, and at that moment I thought, you know, I don't have to be embarrassed. I don't have to think that I'm not capable. I just haven't been given the opportunity. Yeah. And um, you look at a ton of these little in schools. In a safe environment. Where in a safe environment, in a supportive environment. And that's what we've set up here. Um, one of the things that I would like to start next, Grace Hopper, is a little session where I teach the newcomers, like, hey, I was in your shoes, this is, yeah. these are some good points. Welcome to camp, hey, from, it's fun. From board members, from uh, people that want to give me insight, and that way they have a packet to go in and be like, okay, I have my resume, I have a smile, I have confidence, um, yeah, and that way we have an even bigger support network so that people continue to to show that their presence in what's, this. What's the coolest thing you've seen here so far this week? The coolest thing. Yeah, the coolest thing. Um, honestly, even though there's a ton of cool tech stuff here, um, there are a few first years that I've met and uh, I've encouraged them to go up to a few companies and uh, I've been peeking, I've been keeping up with them, <laughs> uh, you know, walking around and uh, this one girl noticed that I was watching her and she turns around and goes, it was hilarious. I broke out laughing. She was 
like so that's all she needed was a little pep talk. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, I, I think we forget that. I think that that sometimes that's all that you need, you know. So that was that was probably the coolest thing. And on your coding example, was that part of an interview or part of a session or? or yeah, that's I just. That's amazing if you're in an interview and they're asking you an interview question, you don't know the answer, so they say, let's take a minute and, yeah. and uh, you know help what you it learn was? it. They were looking at how I was thinking, and I think we forget that. It wasn't necessarily the code, because you can teach that, but it's a method, it's, it's, it's heart, and it's, can you think in this way? And I succeeded in that, so I did get the internship at the end. Well, that's one of the so. exciting things that I like right now. I have a computer science degree from the 80s, and, and Eileen, who we interviewed earlier, same thing. And it's changed so much. Yeah. Computer science isn't the you know, yeah. blocking and tackling, learn these languages, go do some architecture, go build a compiler, although that's some great stuff there now, but it's got a broader range. Yeah. What is the landscape for someone who's in college, who may be in some curriculum vector that says whether it's journalism, uh, yeah. like Natalia, or somewhere else going, hey, you know what? It's okay to poke at that computer science thing. Yeah. What is your, what is your advice to those kids the out there. The advice that I would give to someone starting out in college um, in a field that's not necessarily computer science is that there's a way of thinking that you learn, a uh, mathematical type of thinking. Math is a great basis for a lot of the things you do. You have to do this step before you can do this step and this step. And it's a methodical way of thinking that allows you to, to kind of structure your thoughts and then your code and then your ideas and then the portrayal of those ideas. And you can be a manager, you can be a coder, but those same skills are vital in this, in this day and age as things get faster. To be able to portray information quickly and effectively and ordered is, is, is something that you'd get doing one computer science What's course. the upside for that risk taking, for that person? What is the upside? Because everyone is, look, say they're a little nervous, they're a little uncomfortable, which is good. I'm, being outside your comfort zone can be a good thing. But what's the upside? What would you share is the upside if they can cross over the other side? In learn computer science. Yeah, just you know, what the, what's give some anecdotal, share an insight. Uh, what what's possible? What are some of the things that you've seen, experienced, and seen others do? As a woman um, in computer science, it's still a bit shocking that you know when I go and talk to people about what I do, they're like, "Oh wow, that's awesome." Um, but some of my male colleagues that have been with me in these instances, they the eye raises that they get aren't as frequent. So either I'm blonde and they think that, oh wow, I'm smart, or, or they think, oh, that's a very interesting field. What are you doing combining those? Um, but to be able to move forward in this technological age, it's a tool that is going to be used in every field. That is, that is, that is integral to, to every portrayal of an idea. Um, so there's built-in the upside. Any, there's a, there's a built-in upside because everything's moving this way. It's kind of like you need to learn how to write. We just need to learn how to write on the computer. So right. code. That, that's it's just a portrayal of information. So now you're on the board. Uh, you said you've been coming here for five years since you were a newbie. Now that you're on the board, you know, explain what that feels like a little bit because there's 40 board members, a yeah. couple of students, and and you said this has really grown. What's kind of the vision? What are we going to see over the next several Grace Hoppers besides your your little coding? So uh, as as you guys might know. Um, We've, uh, we now have Grace Hopper in India. So we're really trying to build that. Um, there are also uh, ABI locals. So the Anita Borg Institute dot local. These are local mini uh, groups that are within massive uh, cities. So like San Francisco has one, Boston has one, New York has one. And um, we'd like to see those growing because that way we, we can let people know that yes, this is massive, but the intimacy that you can get through the Anita Borg Institute and w through uh, any kind of computer science interest that you might have as a woman or, or a person in a diverse group uh, can be found on the local, so those are growing. Uh, we also have different organizations for mentorship through different companies, so um, as we proceed forward, those are things that we would like to continue to, to show and flourish, um, so yeah. Yeah, and, and then I think, um, maybe it was Natalia said, there's like 30% of the people here are students. Yeah. Or do you do you know what percentage are students? And then how many of the you know how many people here are sponsored? It's such an interesting model that companies take the time and the money to sponsor Absolutely. you know young college Absolutely. kids to come to this yeah. event. And I mean, you know what's weird? Um, I am now a PhD and I have an NSF graduate research fellowship. So it went full circle. I was sponsored by NSF to come here through a Grace Hopper scholarship that I applied for. And then now I put on uh, little little speeches to talk about how to, how to go about applying. Um, and now I have one to be able to pursue my graduate work. 
And um, so that, that has been something really incredible to, to talk to students about because those are available. They are through the Anita Borg Institute. They're about every May, they're, they're due. So um, that would be something that I, I would encourage every student to work for. I don't know the correct, all, all the numbers. Okay. Um, but those, we're trying to figure out that balance between academics and, and industry right now. Yeah. Because we want to appeal to students. That's true. More and more. Ashley, what are you working on now on your PhD? Sh share with some of the classes you're taking, some mm -hmm. of your interest areas, okay. and uh, you need to work in student side, because that's great stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, the stuff that you're getting jazz about yeah, in, okay. in school and how you can envision that playing okay. out. Um, so I just came back from a Fulbright last, uh, last year, um, and I was in Belgium. <laughs> And there, I was working on a particular protein involved in cell reproduction and cell growth, and I was able to use, actually, machine learning and coalitional game theory to understand the relationships in amino acids that's found in this protein, and figure out, you know, if you tweak a certain part of this uh, domain, how does it affect what it binds to? So, in this project, you can see, just in, just in my short, you know, description, we have biology, we have machine learning, we have, uh, we have game theory, which is a principle from economics, um, so again, back to this whole thing of you know merging a bunch of different fields. Com computer science is the only way possible to be able to do that research. It's the glue. It's the glue. It's the glue. That's exactly what it is. We should have that on a, on a poster. It's glue. We'll put your name right hashtag. under that. It's just the glue. It's just the, exactly. <laughs> it's it's going to be a meme. Card. Right. Right. So um, and now I'm going to be working on um, progression of cancer. Um, That's phenomenal. Yeah. What is the big insight In that's been magnified for you over the past four years with the needs since you got your been to a freshman here, Grace Hopper, now here. What's the big learning that you've been, has been magnified for you, personally? Something that I find uh, really melts my heart, um, but it's also something that I'm screaming and I'm trying to get people to understand is, once you realize the power that Grace Hopper can give you, that once you realize the networks that you can build, give back. If every person here did an hour of code, think about how many disparate, different parts of the globe we would touch. Yeah. Teaching one other student. There are 12,000 of us here, and yeah. it's growing. Um, and I, I really think that every student owes it to Grace Hopper herself, to Anita Borg herself, yeah. to the board, to themselves, to the other students, to be able to integrate younger women. Because as your yeah. question said earlier, where do we need to start? Well, it's in our K through 12. And then we need to work on retention. Grace Hopper's doing that. But we need to start, we need to start fresh, and we can do that. Um, we are the change. You have amazing passion. It's refreshing to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing. Open source has been a big part of that too, and open source software yeah. really is now at a generational point where it's a tier one citizen. This notion of sharing, giving back, yeah. is an open source ethos. And in a social web, virality, you know, amino acids and social networks all kind of go together. It's been a big network effect. How can we just kind of brainstorming real time here, thinking out loud, how can we get the network effect going better? I mean, obviously you got, you got hubs like the locals in San Francisco. Are there ways that, that this new millennial generation, the natives, my daughter in, in uh, freshman in high school and freshman in college, they got all the tools, they got the Snapchats, they got Instagram, they got all the, the collaborative software now is another fabric of network effect. Do you see any insight? Can you share any insight on how we can use those tools to build on this gravity around Grace Hopper? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that we're trying to do at 3BI is, is look at, okay, are there magazines that girls look at? Are there, um, you know, do they, do they look at Elle magazine? Do they look at People? Do they look at Gap, you know? Um, because again, it's, it's this like, who do you know? Uh, who's cool for you? Um, so people like using, um, you said like Snapchat and things, well, we can follow, they, don't they have like uh, little snaps through all the of stories. these stories? Yeah, yeah. So, so we just need to continue to show our faces and show all the cool things we're doing. I mean, look around, the, the, the technology, technological advances that are being shown here, uh, women are doing, guys yeah. are doing it too, but we're also part of it. Right. So we just right. have to right. kind of show our faces. Always be learning and be transparent and share. That's the theme. Absolutely, so that's, that's, the be that's the best way to continue networking. And of course, invi in invite, uh, people to speak at schools um, and engage in a mentorship program. Ashley, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your passion, insight, and energy with us. 
Um, congratulations on all your success. You. Grace Hopper's doing amazing things. That's really the gravity of the situation is here. And of course, this is theCUBE. And if you want to be part of the CUBE team, we are looking for digital analysts, women, technical engineers, field producers. And you know, we don't have any women here on the set. We've been shamed earlier. So <laughs> that is a recruiting message. It'll humble brag here. So if you want to join the CUBE team, feel free to hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we are live here in Houston, Texas. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>